So one question that we get asked all the time, especially when it comes to supercars is, in this day and age, is it really worth having a supercar? Have we lost that time zone where we could really enjoy supercars? So what we're gonna do today is we're going to review our Audi R8 V10 Plus. And this will give you an explanation as to whether it's still worth having a supercar or not. Check it out. Hi guys, I'm Tarek from AMS Performance UK and today we're going to be showboating our Audi R8 V10 Plus. Before I start, make sure you like, subscribe and follow us. So we've had the Audi R8 now for a, a couple of years. Um, we've never really been in a position before to get it out um, and show what we've done to it above what's standard. Um, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through that um, and then tell you a bit, little bit about the enjoyment of owning it, the negatives, the positives and give you guys an insight into cars of this type of calibre. Um, so when we chose this vehicle originally we looked at so many different Audi R8s um, and then eventually um, we pinned it down to only two colours. It was either going to be dynamite red or it was going to be Vegas yellow and whichever came up it was going to be the one for us in the end thankfully we managed to find the dynamite red which as you can see it's such a stunning color um, I personally feel that it's probably the best color that Audi made for the Audi R8 others may disagree so let's talk about what we've done to it um, and why we've done that to it and um, it'll give you basically an insight as to what we're about First of all, when you buy these Audi R8s, there's little things which, they are bugbears of mine. Um, so originally when we got that, we got the Audi R8. Um, things like the badges on the front, um, the side badges where it says V10 on either side, and the badges at the back, these were in silver. Um, I don't know why Audi did that, because you can buy them in black, so why not just put them on from, from the beginning? But hey ho, so that was one of the first things that we did. We, we stripped the badges off it and we got the black ones. Secondly, the grill at the front here, um, that's also in silver. So we swapped that out again for the black one to match the two side fender units, which do come in black also. So I don't know why that they did that. Um, this has got the full carbon pack. So the carbon front lip splitter that's there um, and then coming down to the sides of the vehicle, um, you've got the carbon mirror caps, the carbon side blades, and then at the rear of the vehicle, you've got the carbon um, top spoiler and the carbon rear diffuser. So yeah, so that's the rear carbon diffuser. Um, and then going back down to the side of the vehicle, like I said, you have the carbon, the side blades where the, the wind comes in from, from the sides for the cooling um, and the carbon mirror caps. And again, I think that really flows with the car, with the, the black and the, the red theme. Um, and like I said, why Audi brought the silver into it originally, you know, I, I'm not sure. Um, 
So from that then, what we decided was is that we wasn't quite happy, but well, I wasn't happy on the actual standard form of wheels. Um, I just felt that they were very similar to all the other R8s that are out there. So then I decided, look, let's pick a wheel. Let's get the offsets right so it drops on the side of the vehicle perfectly and create that wider stance. We did swap out then, as you can see, is the wheels themselves. Um, we've gone for a, um, a gloss black Judd lightweight wheel. The most important thing about these is that they were lighter than the originals, but they also had the perfect offset so that they dropped down, if you can see that down the profile of the vehicle, uh, which gave that a slightly wider stance. And again, with the rear, because the, rear, the rears are wider on these, these are running a 305. Um, and again, the offsets were absolutely perfect, so they just fell down the side of the vehicle to give that wider stance. Um, and then we decided that what the, the best thing that we need to do now, we're going to be driving this, it's going to be um, susceptible to stone chips. So we had the whole of the vehicle from the front and down all the sides, which we, is what we call the track pack. And that was a PPF, which is paint protection film, that was fitted to the vehicle. Um, and as you can see, um, it's, it's picked up no stone chips at all, and it is really good at preserving the paint of the car. Um, we decided also as well that we wanted to just PPF the front headlights, but give them that slight little tint to them. So it just took the silver out of these laser headlights, uh, but I just think it works really, really well. Did we stop there? No. We decided then that the roof would look better if it was black because of the way that the roof falls into the back section where the glass is and it's dark. The red roof just didn't do it for us. So the most common thing that people do at this point would then either to paint it, which we wasn't gonna do, um, or wrap it. Now, I'm not personally keen on the material of wrap. I think that the clarity in the film isn't clear enough. So we went into sourcing a PPF film that was gonna go onto the roof. Um, and that was in black, so a black PPF, which believe me was very difficult in finding, but we managed to source it eventually from the States. We had it brought over and then we applied it perfectly, exactly how I wanted it to turn out. And as you see, the contour of that as it goes into the back of the vehicle where the engine, the heart of everything is, um, it just flows really well. So again, I think it was a good decision. If we wouldn't have liked it, we would have just pulled it off, but it does re really well. So after we'd done the PPF from the roof, we decided after Audi released the facelift of this model where it was only the front and the rear bumpers that were changed. Um, I don't know whether everybody has seen that on the, the newer version of the R8 bumpers now, this grille section, the consoles of it go right the way through in black all the way to the other end. So I said, hey, why don't we just PPF in black that section there to tie these two grills in together and make it, make it look like it's the slightly updated version of it. And I think it works really, really well. So then the next enhancements for us to do to the vehicle was to lift that muted V10 which we found the stock exhaust just wasn't giving it everything that it deserved. So after a bit of research and listening to a couple of our rates and stuff, we decided to go with an exhaust change, which if, as you look through the grills there, you'll see it. So that we have fitted a Larini Club Sport exhaust valved. Um, and as we'll demonstrate, the sound of this vehicle then just becomes alive. You know, you, it's gone for something muted. It sounds like a race car that's coming down the street. Um, yeah, it can be a little bit loud on cold, cold start, but once it's warmed up and that drops off, it sounds absolutely superb. It's probably the most favorite mod that I've done to this car so far, so I love that. So the last part that we're going to show you today is gonna be that V10 power plant. The way that glass just comes up, it's just, oozes class and sophistication. We haven't done anything in forms of tuning on this engine, apart from just swapping out the exhaust with the Larini Club Sport. Um, I just don't feel that you need to. They're 610 brake as standard. 
fit in the Larini, take some restrictions out to it. So maybe, you know, we're probably pushing into the, maybe about the 620, 623 now, but it's more than enough for a vehicle like this. Um, in addition to standard spec, what we do have here is, as you can see, is the carbon fiber pack, which basically covers the whole of the engine bay trays. These are normally just black plastic. With this itself, it's, it has the carbon option. And it also has the LED lighting packs there and there. So at night, they, they light up this engine bay so that just when you look through the glass, it just looks a pretty place to be. And that basically sums it up really. So let's start it up and let's show you guys what this really sounds like. See guys, that's exactly the reason why we changed that exhaust. We're gonna go out and about now and we're gonna give you some live sound clips of what this is like on the road. Check it out. So coming out of a fuel station yet again, it's the uh, drawbacks of an R8 V10 Plus. I do feel that maybe now it's time to move on to new passengers and get something else, but I think there's always something that will call me back to an Audi R8 because you're not gonna get this sound from, from anything else. All right, okay, if you bought, you know, something like a Lamborghini SVJ, then fair enough, but for this type of price bracket, which is like just sub 100k you you can't beat it you really can't beat yeah. it and you get a lot of modern tech as well you know it's you've got every it's quite simple inside you do get a lot of things that are creature comforts um you know if you do want to just tootle around you've got the exhaust valve button so you can actually switch that so that it mutes it and you can open up the valve by switching it again you've got like your track button and you've got drive select so you can change the dynamics you can put it into comfort economy and stuff so it's got a virtual cockpit there so everything is in that display which is nice this comes with full extended leather uh, alcantara roof lining uh, the diamond stitch sports comfort seats i like the, the the little dry carbon finishes that it's put on things as well so there's a lot uh, sound system wise as well i mean they put um the bang and Olf system in here and it really is good you know it, when you play it and you crank it up, um, you can't believe that they've managed to get that sound out of a car that's got, you know, kind of a tight cabin. I mean, people have started doing some crazy stuff now with these, you know, people that have pulled the back bumpers off and then done the twin turbos on them. Um, because don't forget this engine is also in the, uh, in the Hurricane as well. They're pulling some crazy power out of it. Um, but I think this is enough. Is it a daily car? That's what people ask me regularly, you know, is, could you daily this car? Well, of course you could. Me personally, I wouldn't want to. I like that occasional drive so that when you are you do get into it and you start it up, you get the excitement all over again and it makes you feel alive. And you're waiting for it to warm up, you're tooting along, you can hear it just purring, windows down, it's great. When it opens up, it's so, the adrenaline rush that just rushes through you. I just think it's just a great feeling that it gives. Um, and I'm glad that I've had one. Now the road's starting to open up now. I should be able to give you an idea. So you can put it into dynamic sports, where it'll start to hold the revs. Um, and then it, we should start to give you some audio now of what this is like. And it's that. It's 
that excitement that just takes your breath away. I love it. Um, and again, you, you only really get that once you've done that exhaust. And it's such a progressive load now. The gear change is absolutely instantaneous. Stopping power, the V10 Plus comes with full ceramic brakes. They just get better as they get hotter. Yeah, looking at Cully, and he's got his eyes closed <laughs> as we're going through. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy that, Cully? <laughs> I don't have any eaten yet. <laughs> but do you see what I mean now? Do you see what I mean? It's just, it just delivers it's in, in so many ways. It's just insane. Um, and you know this, this, it's, this car speaks for itself you, you don't really need to talk about it too much when you have one when you've driven it and when you see what it can deliver as they say enough said and it really is enough said I really hope that everybody's enjoyed the content that we put together today it's give you a little bit of an illustration as to why we did buy an RA and what we love about it and you get asked that, asked that question in this modern day right now, is it worth buying a supercar? Hell yeah, hell yeah. Please remember to subscribe, follow us, and join our journey as we entertain you with more super hot hatches, car modifications, and cars like this.